not a, it's not a leaf blower. <laughs> Size on one of his many bikes. He's on his 1299 today. He has so many bikes to choose from, he never knows what to actually bring out. He's on the 1299S, looking good. And it's loud. I'm getting away from it, don't like it. Oh, That'd be alright, be fine. It's not, a, it's not a leaf blower! <laughs> hey guys, hope you're all okay. You join me on this glorious sunny Sunday morning. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's just spot on. Absolutely spot on. Right. With some of the guys, I think there's uh, three, four, five, about six of us. Not sure where the others are, they're somewhere behind. Always being naughty. So yeah, back from Spain. Had a superb time. Absolutely superb. slowing down for horses. Uh-oh. Great to be back in the UK. Obviously the roads here are nowhere near as good as Spain, but you know what? It's just good to be out with the guys on the bikes. Having a run out in the sunshine, it's brilliant. England are playing football later, so we'd all probably want to get back about one-ish. So it's only half ten. We're heading out to Wheels in Peterborough to have a coffee and just see what's what with the world. Right in this bed, it's going to chat about the things that happened in Spain, anything that went wrong, how good this bike was and how the other guys fared on their bikes. Right guys, what we're going to do, we're heading out to Wheels at Peterborough, there's a Honda dealer there. Some of us guys are going to buy green laning bikes of some kind, so in the winter we can still go out and have some fun. Because for six months of the year at least, we just don't really go out on the bikes. Well, I, I ride to work, but that doesn't count. So, we're interested in Hondas, some KTMs. I think Gaz has got his eye on a KTM free ride. I don't know what CC it even is. I like the thought of the CRF 250L, but I also need to look at the rally, and they are bringing out a 450 uh, CRF in September, October, but the word on the street is that it's only got 25 brake horsepower, the same as the 250, which is completely mad. You know, that isn't, that isn't good. So... I would wait for the 450, but if it's only got the same power as a bloody 250, that's just completely, well, it's a total waste of money. So, and it's about two, maybe two and a half grand more. I can't, I can't remember the prices. Price isn't confirmed yet. We're not used to these uh, things called cars on the road. We're used to Spain where there's uh, no cars. Right, so that's, yeah, 
that's the word on the street is we're going to get some trail bikes there's some brilliant deals around uh, on the hondas there's not percent finance oh god they're so cheap i want something that i don't really care about too much if i drop it i don't i'm not that bothered uh so yeah watch this space i'll keep you all informed on that it may be that a crf 250 rally could even take the place of the africa twin but i wouldn't tell the africa twin before i got that just in case it was a bit gutless and i didn't like it it's nice in the river today so i'll keep the africa twin aim is to have lots of different bikes and i may i may go for a v4 uh, panagale next year as well i don't know yet i want to have enough bikes in my armory different bikes and all very very different that's my plan so guys yeah so spain spain was was brilliant it took us two days to get there two days to get back we had four days riding in the pyrenees and one of those days was absolutely torrential rain so we had one bad day out of four which is a bit annoying when you're only there for four days it's a bit gutting when you've missed the whole day's riding some of these little roads out here are good but the problem is also you can meet a lot of tractors out here guys Spain bikes were all brilliant with no issues at all absolutely brilliant they were stable in the vans you'll see in the videos what we did what we got up to but it, it was brilliant we might not do that next time we might do the ferry go back to the original uh, version of, of how we do those trips and do the ferry to Santander or Bilbao and the riding we found some new areas again as you'll see in the videos I'll put a link now to the trailer the teaser trailer video that i've done of the trip and i'll probably make about four videos four parts about half an hour long each they are going to be quite long but it's more for the guys that like these guys that have done the trip as a memory rather than you guys uh, to watch them but if you enjoy watching them that's that's really cool that's uh very very cool And Gaz's drone was good, we didn't stop and use it that much, but we used it a few times, and you'll see in the videos, it, it worked really well. It was cool, uh, just, just had a great trip, nine lads. We did struggle finding good restaurants yet again uh, that could seat nine people, but it wasn't really a problem. It wasn't a problem. I had a go on some of the other guys' bikes. I didn't get a go on the... Uh, on Simon's V4 Tuono factory. I wanted to have a go on that. I didn't get time. I'll have to have a go on it another day. He's on his 1299S today. He's got loads of bikes to pick, so he's on that. Uh, Wags had a go on it, as in Wags with his 1200S, and he loved it. And so I loved his monster, so he, he, no bike's perfect. I did love on Gazzy's KTM, his gearbox is definitely better than the gearbox on this. But then again, this is only done now just over a thousand miles. So it's not done that many miles. But it's the gearbox on this is starting to bed in. It's getting slowly better. Less false neutrals, a little bit smoother, but Gary's bike's probably done double the miles of mine. But I do think the gearboxes on the KTMs are better than the uh, Ducatis. They're a little bit smoother this is a good gearbox but that's a little bit smoother and I did enjoy I could get on Ga Gaz's Super Duke and I could ride that like I was riding this it was so easy to get off this onto that no problems at all and he liked this he said he had a few moments where exiting a corner when he nailed it and then the front goes a little bit light but not once did I have a moment on this where I thought ah puma pants I needed a steering damper it was absolutely fine because the roads in Spain are so smooth. They're so smooth. Here, the bumps and stuff, yeah, you probably do need a steering damper in the UK. Hey, kid. 
but in Spain it wasn't an issue. I had no issues on this at all. And here I don't ride as hard as I did in Spain. No way, you, you can't. It's too busy, roads and surfaces are poor. So I won't bother with a steering damper. I've had the odd, li the odd little head shake. What the hell was that outside someone's house? Weird scarecrow. Then I will uh, I'll part with it. That's not a problem. Uh, it's not a big deal. So guys, keep an eye out for the other videos that I'll add of the trip. There'll be about four parts. Just subscribe and click the little bell bit on the subscription tag. And you'll get an email or whatever you'll get saying I've added a new video. That seems to be the best way to find out what's what. That's how I do it anyway. I'll get an email saying somebody's added a video. Nice E-type. And that works quite well. So, yeah. Think, well, the, pro the only problem with the, the, the trip was it was very similar to the last trip, apart from we've got different bikes. And you'll see Mr. H is not on his Fireblade today. He's on his Pan European, which is a brilliant bike. Again, he's got lots of bikes. I think his BMW is still being fixed in the uh, at the dealership. I nearly came on the Africa Twin, but I've been riding that all week. And I thought, nah, get this out. This hasn't been ridden since we're in Spain, so take this for a blast. Gas stopped. It's quite amazing out here in the fens how twisty and good some of these little roads are. But I don't know where the hell we are. I don't know these roads at all. I think I've been through down here once in my life before. Lovely Sunday, out to heading out to Peterborough to Wheels and Webb's Yamaha. And tomorrow I'm going to go to Gear 4 in Peterborough, Market Deep in, and they've got Honda there, Moto 4 and um, Husqvarna. I'm, I'm after a second bike. So yeah, I'm after a, uh, I just bought my little lad a CRF 125 for a bit of green lane in and mucking around. So I'm after something to go with him. I've had a KTM 450 before, but it was um, needed the uh, it needed the oil changing uh, seem to all the time. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try and try and get something that's not quite not quite as needy. Anyway, we're getting fuel now. What? Not a fun route so far. It's not, the roads are good, at least the cars, are we? Yeah. I don't know. I just said that it's. That way brings you out at junction below Yeah, I don't know where we are. I'm lost, I'm lost already. Just feeling up. I've got some fuel earlier, so I'm all right. Matt, it's nice to see you cleaned your bike, ready for this little excursion out. I, I just think it's brilliant. They'll clean it, they'll clean it when they sell it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mud and flies from Spain, look. It, uh, but your tyres are alright. Yeah. They definitely got scrubbed in in Spain. Feeling up. I think I'm alright. Bloody hoses. Ugh. Horrible. Terrible. Ugh. Yeah, cool man. Your bike alright? Yeah, it's good. It's running well at the moment. It sounds good. I've been fiddling with my settings. Give me a what, mode. Fiddling with your balls? What? Yeah. What? Because <laughs> you can dial everything in, so you really control everything. Right, it's good. It's great, actually. It's good fun. The roads out here are quite fun, but it's just cars and the police, and you've got to be careful. Be all over the place. We're not in Spain, mate, are we? Okay. Right. I don't know where we are either. Just follow you. I've no idea, man. Does your bike feel all right? Mine feels feels fine. It's quite wobbly on these roads, though. Yeah, it's a it's steering damper again. I'm just chatting about that. But I'm paying 600 quid just to ride it here now and again. Spain, it was fine. Yeah. It's just annoying. You can, look at, 
you can look at lids in webs in, in the... It's a millimetre of hair. <laughs> His lid's loose because he's shaved his head. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Let's get rolling. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, my, any of you guys have got a Ducati of any kind, I guess. I used a tank bag on this bike in Spain, as you, as you would have seen, and I put some uh, clear wrap on the tank it was a bit of a bodge but you probably saw in the video before I went to Spain of how I did it so guys yeah anyone using the magnetic tank bag on the Ducati use some wrap do not put the tank bag on the bike without any wrap because you will score the paint big time it's just not a good idea right guys I think we're nearly at wheels in Peterborough any of you guys out in this area they sell lots of different bikes. They're a Honda dealer, I think Aprilia, Suzuki, I can't remember. You'll see when we get here in a minute, but it's a, it's a really good dealership. It's massive. They've got, they've got hundreds of second-hand bikes stored under a massive uh, sort of warehouse-style showroom. And the Honda dealer, which is on the same site, has got a... Uh, cafe upstairs you can have a coffee do bacon sandwiches and stuff like that so it's just somewhere to come to ride out and have a coffee and as we're looking at trail bikes we thought we'd come and have a, a butcher's there's a dealership not far from here that does more uh, motocross high-end enduro bikes the ones that aren't really built for the road but I don't think any gals might go for something like that but most of us are just interested in something we can use on the road and there isn't some huge compromise of road bike, trail bike you've got to be able to ride to the trails uh, have some fun and ride home that's the plan, right are we here? yep, here we are <clears throat> here we are bumpy old track that is the wheels very unsurfaced uh, very badly surfaced road uh, uh, uh. thank goodness for Olin's what the hell is that it's so busy here <clears throat> a lovely day as well so nice couldn't really get it better but yeah the Kawasaki I think when I'm a little bit older perhaps I am getting old but my brother said oh you won't have much fun on it G-Man said oh it'll be a bit uh, around the corners but now I'm going to take it to this road I think tomorrow if I have time uh, we've kind of booked a test ride well just said come along um, and uh, just want to go on it it's amazing it actually feels really comfortable and there's not really going to be any wind wind resistance um so yeah do you know what it's 
fun swapping bikes about. I am on my third Super Duke and I seem to have made a few mistakes before on selling them. Um, but there, there's nothing wrong with going back to it again. The only thing is this has got the full race system on it, titanium full system, which is over two grand. Um, so, yeah, they'd have to give me a very good price on this bike for me to let it go. Because I can easily, obviously, take the um, exhaust off and sell it privately. guys just heading back to mine sadly somehow I put a dead battery into the uh, main GoPro camera on my helmet so I didn't record any of the journey uh, that we did back and we had a really good time coming but the roads were brilliant I got a little bit of footage that you would have seen on the lower camera but that was it so uh, yeah a little bit a little bit annoying but we did check out some bikes at wheels we had a coffee I think I've fell for the CRF 250L. I looked at the rally, but the seat's a little bit higher and I'm a, I'm a bit tippy-toe on it, so uh, I think I'm gonna go for the standard uh, CRF 250L, as in not the rally one. Uh, so I'm just gonna wait till the autumn, as I said, just to see if the uh, 450 has more power. If it does, I'll go for that. If it doesn't, I'll uh, just go for the 250. So there's some good deals around. So I'll just have to wait till the autumn, September, October. Don't need a green laning bike really till then because I will be riding on the road. So it's pointless. So I will wait till the autumn to get a good deal. No problem all. Gary fell in love with the Kawasaki H2, I think it's the SX, it's like a touring version of the H2. He's actually test riding it tomorrow. Uh, I don't know, I, I like it, but it's, I don't know, you can't have that instead of his KTM, it's a completely different bike. Uh, anyway, he's going to go and ride one, they're going to go out that way to the Honda dealer that does the Enduro uh, bikes, as in the... Uh, 250 the proper enduro the more like motocross style enduros so he's doing that tomorrow sorry I was distracted I had to get by those cars and this bloody road so bumpy it's a bloody bump fest so yeah forget about the green landing bikes that not even going to think about that for now just keep my eye on the market what's about and just enjoy this beauty through the summer going out and rides like that with the lads is great it's just even just then the gearbox is so much better than before i had a service like 600 miles ago no false neutrals are just smoother the up change is no jerkiness at all. It's not that far away uh, to Gazzy's Super Duke gearbox. Just after riding it then, on the way there, I was like, oh, his gearbox is better. But actually, that the rider just did, it was it was pretty brilliant. The gearbox is definitely bedded in. Everybody says after the service, it beds in and this and that. It does. It, it's so much better. Down changes are just smooth as silk. There's no jerkiness at all. If you saw the video I did of uh, the exhaust and the tank bag before I went to Spain, I'll put a link to it now. You saw that I took the baffles out, both baffles out of the pipe. Well, I used it for the first day in Spain, and you'll see most of the part one video is of the bike with no baffles in it. It's bloody loud. And it, the revs were uneven. It wasn't, it didn't settle the bike. It wasn't good. So I put, on the second day, I put one of the, ba the lower baffle back in. And it seems to be the perfect mi mixture of noise. Uh, the revs are perfect, it's starting better. It seems the perfect mix. 
somebody did tell me to do that. I don't know who it was now, some, someone from YouTube. So I put the other baffle back in, as in one of them. And look, you can, it just sounds, this is third gear. And it just, it sounds brilliant. So one baffle in is the way forward. I'm going to leave it like that. It, it's loud. It's nearly as loud as Simon's 1299 with his full of crap of its system. This isn't far off that. So, yeah, anyone with a double termy pipe, you're not sure what to do, just take one baffle out and you'll, the sound will be spot on. Don't get me wrong, this is bloody loud still. This is as loud as Gary Super Duke. Definitely, the very similar in sound. So just thought I mentioned about the pipe, there's just one thing I've forgotten about. Uh, my back tyre, I think the 600 miles I did in Spain, I probably lost about half the tread off the back tyre. <laughs> so it's not, it's about two mil away from the wear indicator now. But we were gunning it in Spain, as you'll see from the video. So yeah, if the tyre wears out, the tyre wears out, it means you're using it. So it was, uh, the tyres were absolutely brilliant. So yeah, the Rosso, the Rosso three tyres on this were brilliant. I did let out three PSI front and back. I can't remember what I actually had them at. But Wags on the first day hadn't let any air out of his tyres and they were they were just set to the manufacturer's levels. And he kept having a few moments and he, and he said, oh, the grip's not good and this and that. I said, mate, let your tyres down a bit. He let a little bit of pressure out, three PSI, and it made a huge difference. 100%, no moments at all. A damp roads it just never let us down so this tire is superb I just did a test in one of the magazines with all the different tires uh, this tire the, the Rosso 3s the new Rosso Corsa uh, and the Pierre Pirelli's didn't seem to come out that well but I think the Metzler M7RR came out top they're gonna do a track test at some point on them as well I bet the Pirelli's will do well on that they're definitely a softer rubber so yeah, I'm d they're very confidence inspiring these tyres, faultless, I cannot fault them at all for, the, for what I want out of a bike, they are absolutely spot on. Cool, alright guys, I've got a few ride outs coming up in the evenings, got one to Ducati uh, to get the fuel gauge looked at, <clears throat> so I will do the odd little video now and again. Just got to work on the Spain uh, trip videos, when you've got lots of different people's memory cards and that to uh, pull footage of it takes a long time to sort out and the drone stuff and that so bear with me you probably have a Spain vid every couple of three weeks I'm not going to do any more than that it just takes up too much time cool all right guys take it easy and I'll uh, see you in the next vid cheers <laughs>